Okay, so here we are seeing uh, one more thing here. That is, we are seeing a stat summary. Okay, so remember, there's you you can say geom something or you can say stat something because geoms and stats go hand in hand. Every geom has an associated stat, and every stat has an associated geom, right? So you can actually do the plot the individual stats, right? And there is a, something called as a stat summary, and it produces something called as a geom point range. Okay, I won't get into it now. For now, it's a little bit complicated, not all that widely used. So I'm going to skip right through uh, this and this. Okay. So uh, again, now I'm just going to put some questions up here for you to uh, explore, right? Saying so, there is something called as geom call, right? Uh, I think in the last class I had asked you to download the ggplot cheat sheet. Uh, so if you can look at this cheat sheet and then do a little bit of experimentation, okay? Or of course you can always Google some of these things and do a little bit of experimentation. You you learn something. And it says, what does geom call do? How does it differ from geom bar? Okay, so geom bar, as we already know, you say x equals something, and then it creates counts based on that x variable, and the counts determine the bar heights. Okay, whereas geom call allows us to base the bar heights on any attribute from the data. In other words, without any transformation. Right here, there is a transformation that is used, whereas the geom call. Uh, there is no need for any transformation, right? So you can base the heights based on any attribute from the data. You can do a little exploration and see how that works. Okay. Now, as we've already said, most geoms and stats come in pairs uh, that are almost always used in concert. And that is why I said uh, we don't need to worry too much about stats uh, because the you know we use the, the geoms, uh, the default the, we use the geoms, and the default stats associated with the geoms are almost always fine, right? So it will be a good idea for you to read through the documentation and make a list of all the pairs. That is, uh, what are all the geoms and what are all the stats associated with each geom, okay? What do they have in common? You can take a look at that and then see how it all behaves. One of the things they all have in common is that, uh, you know, uh, the, the geom point will plot a point, geom box plot will plot a box plot, and so on, right? So the, the type of the plot and the name of the uh, geom have a very good correlation, right? Other than that also, take a look at the connection between the geoms and the associated stats and see if you can see any uh, commonality, okay? Uh, what variable does stat smooth compute? Uh, what parameters, forget this for the time being, you can, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the other question was what control the behavior and the, uh, the predicted value and the 95% confidence intervals is what stats smooth computes. Okay. For now, it's not important for us to go into this. Later on in the course, we'll revisit this. Okay. Uh, there's another important topic in, uh, in ggplot called position adjustments. So let's take a look at a plot first to see, uh, to motivate the topic. Okay, so once again, we are using the diamond and we are using uh, geom bar, x is cut, color is cut. Okay, earlier we only said x is cut and we got the counts, but now we are saying base the color of each of the bars on the variable cut. That is, don't base just the height, also base the color. This is particularly not a u this is not a particularly useful chart, but let's just see this. Okay, now does color doesn't seem to have had any impact. Actually, color has had an impact. It's just not very clearly visible. Because in a bar or on a histogram, when you say color, it determines the color of only the outline. right? So in fact, if you look closely, you'd see that the outline of each of the bars has a different color based on the cut. right? Now, one might have thought that when you say color, it will determine the color of the bar itself. Unfortunately, that is not how color works. Color usually determines the color of a point or the color of a line. When you want the whole bar's color, then you use the fill attribute. Okay, so if you say fill equals cut, then you see that each bar has a different color. Okay, of course, as I said earlier, this is not a particularly useful chart, right? 
because the height is already based on color okay uh, so on the cut which is clearly you can see here and you know which uh, cut has what height so there's really no need to put a color additionally on top of that it's just redundant and it's just you know crowding up the chart that's all it's doing the color is not really adding anything here but the reason i showed it to you is to motivate the following discussion okay so now we are going to say aesthetics x equals cut fill equals clarity now clarity is another attribute within the data frame and what you're saying is show me the height of each bar based on the cut but fill each bar depending upon the clarity variable okay so that's what you're going to get here right so you're going to look at this bar and uh, what it's showing you is that of the ideal cuts it is showing by color how many of them have what kind of clarity okay so in the diamond industry they have certain specific ways of looking at clarity with these you know these are the descriptions of clarity they use okay and it's giving you an idea of how many diamonds with the ideal cut have what kind of clarity okay so that's what uh, you're able to do here so now you're able to use the fill attribute to further sub subdivide each bar okay unfortunately this kind of a plot is not very useful because you know it's difficult you know when you want to compare for example you may want to compare how many of this kind of clarity exists in each uh, each bar okay since they don't occur side by side it's very difficult to see uh, to make comparative estimates of course you can get a gross idea and feel that uh, okay looks like there are quite a few here but then you know the total is also high so it's very difficult to extract any meaning from that additional piece of information that you see here okay in fact later on in the course i will recommend that you don't use this kind of a plot but for now i'm using this just to illustrate to you the concept of position okay now uh, the uh, for when you have bar and you have multiple things being plotted on each bar the notion of position comes into play and for geom bar the default position is stack okay that means you're saying fill each bar with different color and what it's going to do is it is stacking the colors one on top of the other okay it's stacking the colors one on top of the other notice that on the vertical side as before the height of this last the biggest bar is more than 20000 okay make a note of that because the next slide is going to say something different for you okay so the other options for position are identity dodge fill okay so you can think of this bar as actually being made up of many bars okay like one made up of many bars one for each color okay and by default all those bars are stacked one on top of the other and that is the default behavior okay now let's see how these other behaviors work so i'm going to now use identity okay we'll come to this alpha equals 1 by 5 1 by 5 we'll come back to that but we are going to use position equals identity earlier the position was stack because that was the default we didn't say anything about position and it took the default position of stack okay when you do this now now notice that you're saying position equals identity that means remember i had earlier said that the that each bar right the bar for ideal the bar for premium is itself made up of many sub bars based on the clarity and in this all the sub bars are stacked one on top of the other okay but in this one we are telling it don't stack them just put them all overlap them that's what we are saying okay which is why you see that the height is now only 5000 earlier the height was 20000 because all the bars were stacked one on top of the other but now 
all of the bars have been plotted on top of each other. Okay, which means that what it did was it first plotted the tallest bar and then it plotted the next tallest and the next tallest and the next tallest so that you were able to see at least somewhat all the colors. Okay. So that's what uh, that's what this is. That is why the height has now become only 5000 because uh, the maximum was 5000, this clarity and that's all it's showing you. Okay. So which means if you go back to the previous one, let's look at that one. Uh, so the highest was probably uh, maximum is which one? This one, I think. Right off the lot, this one is probably the maximum, which is roughly... Uh, you know, if you take a look at its top to bottom, it's roughly 5,000, I think. So that is the one that, that got plotted first. And then the other things got plotted uh, on top of it, right? Th that is the way you should do it because otherwise, if you plot this last, then this will simply overlap everything else, right? So in fact, when there are overlapping colors, right, to make it clear what is happening, you can make the colors transparent and that is what alpha is doing. Okay, Alpha is making the colors a little bit transparent so that when there is overlapping, you get a slightly clearer picture. But, you know, definitely, I don't believe that this is a great chart at all. And we would recommend later on in the course not to use this, but we are just using it to illustrate some concepts. Okay, so position equals identity simply said, plot each bar at its normal position, which means it's going to, they're all going to get over plotted with each other. Okay, so that is what identity is. Now, if you don't like that identity and it, uh, uh, you know, the overlapping, then one good idea is to plot it with identity, but don't put any fill color so that there is no overlapping issue. Okay, so then you get an idea here of, uh, you know, the whole thing and, and all the others and so on. Okay. Still not a great chart. It's a lot of effort to make any sense out of this. Okay. But just trying to use this to illustrate position. Right. Fill equals NA base basically says plot the bar and then you know, don't fill it with any color. Okay. Uh, so that's what this is. Uh, this is another approach. Position equals fill. Otherwise, everything else is the same. When we say position equals fill, what we are telling it is make each bar that is uh, the, the bar uh, to occupy the entire range right so when you say position equals fill it's not going to plot the counts instead it's going to plot the proportions right and it's going to treat for each bar it's going to treat the total as one and then it's going to show you the proportions of each of the subcomponents Okay, so that's what position equals fill does. Now, this does a better job of helping us to compare the proportions, right? So, clearly, you can see that on the rightmost bar, there are more of these qualities proportionately, okay? Or even this quality is proportionately pretty high on this, right? So, you can now get a good idea of the mix of the various clarities within each kind of cut, okay? You can see there is a distinct difference in the pattern okay but the height of the bar is no more representing how many of each type there are this plot is used only to compare the proportions uh, across the different types but at this point you've lost the, uh, the information about how many of each kind of cut there are right? consciously we've chosen not to ask for that information okay finally the uh, position option there is one called dodge Dodge basically says, okay, within each bar, there are many different clarities. Instead of putting the clarities either one on top of the other, stacking them, or just, you know, over casting each of them, instead of doing that, plot them side by side. Okay. So for that, the option you use for position is called Dodge. Dodge places them all side by side. Okay. Once again, not a very useful plot. Because it's very difficult to uh, to really uh, get your hand around all the details that such a plot is providing. 